Hola, Art New Vogueers, and welcome to a brand new episode of Art New Vogue with your host, Leilani Frida Joy. This is my video art blog where I document my creative process and give you guys some tips and tricks along the way. I'm sorry I've been gone so long. Things have been kind of hectic in uh, my career and personal life and everything. Uh, my husband recently went 100% freelance, so we have been sharing what was my studio. So now I have to share it with him too. And it's made it kind of challenging to find time to film videos and other stuff. But anyways, I am back and I'm very, very, very excited about this specific piece, as you can probably tell. So recently I was invited by La Bodega Gallery in San Diego, California to be part of their fourth annual Frida Kahlo tribute show. And I really wish I could have gone in person. They had a Frida Kahlo costume contest, which I guess I'm just trying to do it now since I wasn't able to attend. And I've wanted to paint Frida for the longest, longest time. She's actually a huge inspiration inspiration of mine, um, not just from her art, but her as a person. She was a pretty incredible badass lady. And in her time, she challenged gender norms. She overcame adversity, physical pain. Um, yeah, so she was really a, a pretty amazing person. So if you don't know who she is or why I'm rocking a unibrow today, please go look up Frida Kahlo and then go back and watch my video. Most people do know who she is. She's actually one of the world's most famous artists, I dare say. And she's just kind of an icon, frankly, for Mexican culture, for art culture, for women culture. And I've been really wanting to pay a tribute to her for the longest time. But to be perfectly honest with you, I was actually really afraid to do this piece because there are so many fans of Frida and she there's something about her story and her art that kind of touches the heart and the soul. And I think I've talked to many artists who've seen her paintings in person and there it's kind of an unforgettable experience because you can truly feel what she was going through in her work. And um, I, I've heard some great stories from, from Frida fans who have sat outside galleries, have been to her museum, which I would love to go to. Um, but she has um, a very strong and loyal fan base. And that's a really big challenge to take on because I certainly would not want to offend the fan base. I wouldn't want to offend her. I wouldn't want to just copy her. Um, I've seen a lot of free to tribute art and I was like, well, I want to do something that's my own, which is, um, and I know I don't want to just steal from her ideas because I didn't experience those experiences, <laughs> thank God, um, that she went through. So this one, I went around a lot. Now I'll talk a little bit more about my process. I went through some self-loathing on this one for sure. Um, but anyways, I, I'm so happy to be painting this today. I figured the art blog definitely needs more unibrow. I don't have the mustache. Okay, because I shaved my real one off, so it's a little too real to draw it back in, you know what I'm saying? But hey, she wore the eyebrow and the mustache proud, and she's pretty awesome and she's my hero today. So let's pay a tribute to her and I hope you guys enjoy the process. If you guys like my videos and you love my art, please remember to support me on Patreon as well at patreon.com slash Joy for exclusive content, behind the scenes video, coloring contest, and my newly added sticker club where I'm mailing you guys stickers every month. That's been really fun so far. So be sure to check that out after you watch this video. Now let's see the creation of my piece, for Frida. So here I have a couple of inspiration books from my collection, and this is a favorite of mine. My mom got me this book years ago, and I absolutely love these rare photos by Nicholas Murray. He knew Frida intimately, and he really captured her in her element. So a brief bio on Frida Kahlo, if you're not too familiar with her, though I do urge you to seek and learn more about her. I'm a big fan of the film based on her life starring Selma Hayek, so you could also check that out if you're interested. So Frida was a Mexican artist who was made most famous by her self-portraits, though she does have other works inspired by nature and artifacts of Mexico and some other subjects too. At 18, she suffered a near fatal bus crash that left her with a lifetime of pain and constant surgical procedures. She was able to transcend her pain and express it in many of her paintings. Her paintings often had a strong autobiographical elements and mixed with realism and fantasy. She's sometimes referred to as a surrealist, but she is quoted in saying, quote, they thought I was a surrealist, but I wasn't. I never painted dreams. I painted my own reality. So take a look at this book. This is oh so incredible. Like my sister got me this for my birthday last year and I am obsessed with it. I wish I 
thought of it and I wish this was my book actually. Um, but I love this, um, illustrated narrative of Frida's life and in the own, in the artist's own interpretation. And it's got these beautiful cutouts and layers and I, I'm just obsessed with it. I highly recommend you pick this one up as well. I can't completely explain why I've always been drawn to Frida in her work, but I think many of us can relate to being in a low, dark place and searching for a way to express it and find the light. She overcame pretty unbelievable odds in order to keep creating her art. She had this incredible fire and passion despite overwhelming pain and despair, and that's pretty inspiring, not just to artists, but to anyone who's had to overcome. So with that being said, creating a genuine and uncontrived tribute to Frida is very important to me, and it's kind of a new challenge. I don't consider most of my works to have deep symbolism and meaning, so typically I try to focus on capturing a moment or a simple narrative or just an emotion in my character, but it's not usually from my personal experiences. In this case, though, I really want to put careful thought into my tribute and not simply just copy elements from Frida's works. I just kind of feel like that's disingenuous somehow. The show is set to open on Frida's birthday, so I'm thinking of this piece as kind of a gift for Frida herself. No pressure, right? <laughs> So with this in mind, I decided to start with a portrait in my own style and then work my narrative elements around that. So at this stage in the drawing, I had shared a work in progress and I had a particularly vocal Frida fan that was really kind of upset at me for omitting Frida's often present mustache. <laughs> and to that, I simply responded that this is my interpretation. And though I do love and appreciate Frida's ability to express both the masculine and feminine in her life and her art, my interpretation will focus more on the feminine because that's a little bit more true to my personal aesthetic, which is far from photorealism, so I don't feel it would really fit in this instance. Regardless, I don't think any artist should ever have to defend their interpretation of anything, so just in case anyone was wondering about the mustache. So now that I was pretty content with my portrait, I printed it in several times so I could try some thumbnail ideas by hand. And this was really the stage where I hit a wall of self-loathing, which I'm sure many of you guys can relate to. And nothing I drew was good enough. Everything was too contrived, it had been done before, or it was just simply not what I wanted to say. And I wanted my tribute to incorporate elements that brought Frida joy and emit freedom. Um, so much of her work was her trapped in pain and, and anguish and what she was going through. And I really love envisioning Frida in the afterlife, kind of as she was represented in Pixar's Coco, if you guys have seen that. She's just creating elaborate art performances with no boundaries, no suffering. So yeah, that's really a lot to cram into one little painting. So after a few days of you're a terrible artist and you don't even deserve to breathe Frida's name, let alone paint her, <laughs> I finally took, uh, I took myself to Photoshop with some ideas in my head. And this was when something really strange began to happen. I began to place some photo reference elements in here and I, I knew I wanted a spectrum of color in a floral rainbow crown and without even realizing it, I selected the marigold and a wonderful fan of mine reminded me that the marigold is the celebration flower of the Day of the Dead and the afterlife, which was just so perfect. I was kind of just thrilled with that. I also selected hummingbirds as Frida loved them especially and for their life energy. I really liked that kind of concept. But I also um, found out that they are powerful symbols in Mexican and Aztec culture representing joy, independence, freedom, optimism. The Aztecs recognized hummingbirds as brave and courageous fighters that, and that the bird never died, which is kind of amazing and perfectly fitting for Frida just as Frida's influence and inspiration has transcended her death and hence the hummingbird skull on her necklace here. I kind of liked this um, juxtaposition of life and death. 
I also knew I wanted some hair ribbons because she also wore those often. And I wanted them to kind of have this veiny, like netting kind of pattern in the hair. And purely by accident, I clicked and dragged my little doodle layer here. And suddenly I, I saw something and it looked to me like the veins of a lung. And when I saw that, I got that like amazing surge of excited inspiration that is like pretty much the best feeling ever. And I'm like, that's it, that's it. This was the final element I was in search of. And this is when I really started to finally get the feels with this piece. The lungs are just kind of this perfect symbol of breathing new life. And though Frida is gone from our world, her legacy lives again through the artist she's inspired. I wanted this creative lifeblood to flow out and off of the canvas, symbolizing the inner connectivity of all artists with that that inspires them. And at last, I had a concept that captured the story I wanted to tell and would hopefully make the perfect gift for Frida. And um, I just wanted to add this little note here that as I was creating this piece during the time that I was painting this, um, it was near Frida's birthday, so that could explain it. But everywhere I went, every restaurant, on the street, um, just like random places I would see her on a poster, on a mural, um, on a restaurant menu. It was just like, it was amazing. And I just felt like her energy was with me. I don't know. I'm not necessarily like a spiritual or um, superstitious person or anything, but it was just like a really interesting thing that happened. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was cool, unexplainable. So now I think we're ready to paint. So let there be color, paint, and music.
Okay, you guys, well, my Frida Kahlo piece is almost finished now. And before I show you how she turned out, I just want to tell you a few quick things. First of which is, if you are not already following me over on Twitch, please check me out over there. I'm trying to live stream more often. I'm kind of moving my paint alongs over to a live experience. Just because I can do it more often, I can chat with you guys live, answer your questions for you. I would really love to have you following me over there. I also wanted to tell you guys about some new acrylic paints that I recently picked up from Arteza. And I know you guys always like to know what I'm using, what brands and everything. And this is a new brand that I recently tried out and I did use some on my Frida piece and I've been super happy with them. And they're a really great affordable and comparable alternative to Golden, which is kind of crazy. So you should definitely check this out if you want to try a new brand. And please tell Arteza that I sent you by checking out my affiliate link at tinyur url.com slash lj arteza and that will take you right to the shop they usually have specials and sales going on um, i've also been super happy with their color pencils and their uh, real brush pens those things are amazing and i'm going to post a full review of these products really soon so if you want a new brand to try check those out also if you want to sign up for my class you can always find that at artnouveau.com you can take my art school express art school crash course and i'm actually working working on something new to add to that, so stay tuned for that as well. And last but certainly not least, if you would like to pick up a print of my piece called For Frida, you can find her in my Etsy shop at etsy.com slash shop slash Leilani Joy Art. Uh, this original is already sold, so I want to send out huge hugs and thank you to Tracy. Um, we talked back and forth about this piece a little bit and about what it meant to me and like sort of my ideas behind it, and she just said she had to have it and so it's really incredibly touching and humbling to find the special forever owner of a piece that uh, they connect with there's really nothing more satisfying than that but if you miss this original piece I am doing limited edition canvas reproductions that I hand embellish it's sign and number and they have a certificate of authenticity and those are selling really quick so if you do want to grab one of those hustle over to my Etsy shop as well all right, I guess that's all the news I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching my video. Hope to see you guys on Patreon and Twitch as well. Um, I have been on those a little bit more frequently. So if you want to keep up with me, please follow me on over there, okay? Okay, guys, thank you so much and see you next time.